what sort of a vision do you guys have moving forward for CAD? Uh, and and this is so. He, hold on, let me just say something as well. I've, if I if I bring out all the memories that I have from conversation where conversations where CAD and Dandy was was mentioned, yeah, I got eighty percent hate hateful things jumping out of people really yep. emotionally charged like what the fuck are yep. you guys you know these guys are bastardizing south da, da, da. and like 20 percent of people would be like you know these guys know exactly what they're doing so yep. i don't know what those things those those negative uh, opinions are based on i can guess i could probably have an idea of why but what should what should the average person expect from Cat and the Dandy on on Savile Row. You know what what do you guys stand for? Like what's 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 up? You know. Yeah. Um. Well. You know. There's 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 always there's always going to be that negativity if you try and uh, challenge the status quo. Yeah. The reason what not not even the reason why there's uh, negativity, but just to sort of emphasise mm -hmm. the sort of bizarreness of it. Um, you know, it, after two years, I petitioned the Savaray Bespoke Association to open a coffee mm -hmm. shop on the street using one of the empty shops. I said, come mm -hmm. on, guys, why don't we do this? It's a collaborative thing. All the houses can use it. We all like a coffee. There's an empty shop. It looks shit. Why don't we do it? Mm -hmm. Nothing. No, no progress, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. So it, it, in lockdown one, I spoke to the landlord and said, look, when we reopen, the key thing for all of our businesses is going to be footfall. And Savaray has no footfall. Right. Can you give me a unit of which I'll pay you a notional rent on and I will do the coffee shop and right. I will bring people to the street. And so I put my money where my mouth is and I could have called it the Cadenet Andy Cafe Shop, whatever. I didn't. I called it the service. Yeah. And the first thing I did, I hosted an exhibition to all the other tailors on the street. Mm -hmm. Put your work in here and we'll put a big plaque and I paid for all of that. Mm -hmm. Not one other tailor would have organized that for any other tailor on Savile Road. Mm -hmm. Four of the big houses wrote the letter of complaint to the landlord saying that a coffee shop would attract the wrong type of person. So we can deep dive and analyze what the wrong type of person is. Yeah. But you know what? Coffee is one of life's great levelers that you and I both drink it. Yeah. And your budget might be five pounds for coffee and mine's three quid. But you know what? We're still in the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. It's not a bottle of Petrus where, you know, it's way above my budget, but it's your sort of daily drinking, right? This is... Yeah a function just to get people on the street mm -hmm. and not one of the old school owners will go into that coffee shop and buy a coffee because they think they're putting a pound in my pocket and you know what to this day i think it's probably made about 800 pounds mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i continually host events in there to the rest of the street so if you go in there at the moment there's uh, the exhibition for the Savaro Concourse. So all the tailors that have worked with car companies in the past have their garments in there, displaying their work with their plaque and their name on it. Mm -hmm. But they all hate cat. Mm -hmm. So I, as I say, it, it can, you know, it, it, I don't want to be bitter about it. It's just one of those things that, you know, if you challenge the status quo and you do something a bit different, mm. you know, and it's, oh, we make all of our suits overseas. Well, that's a lead bollocks. I probably make more suits on Savile Road than any other tailor on Savile. Mm. I make for two other companies on Savile Row. Mm -hmm. And, and you'll, you'll get a ranking of tailors, like who makes the best suits. Oh, right. no, they make much better suits than CAD. I make the suits for them. Right, right. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> we, make, we make currently for just under 50 other tailors. <laughs> on a, a B2B business. In, in, mm -hmm. We make for tailors in Paris, uh, obviously our, our company in Sweden, uh, but also a, a lot of tailors in America, a couple of tailors in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all handmade bespoke suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so there, there's always, there's always going to be that sort of negativity. And, and, you know, obviously that's something I'd like to change. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, you, know you, you can't control other people's behavior. And all the young guys from Savile Row, all the other tailors from every other shop go in there and have a coffee and, and, and mm. say, say, look, James, this is great. Um, this is bringing people onto the streets. And it really has. By the way, yeah, it really yeah, yeah, has yeah. brought the type of people onto the street, not the wrong type of people, the right type of people, all people coming onto the street, surely the right mm. type of people. Um, yeah. But, you know, but where we go as a business, you know, I don't, it's, as I say at the, at the beginning, it's not, we don't want to be a suit buyer. We just mm -hmm. want to have a business that's, you know, a steady growing ship where we can constantly, you know, imp improve things. 
and, and, mm-hmm. and not stay stuck in the past and, and, and constantly move and progress and, and, and make things better. I, I never, ever would like to stagnate. As I say, mm-hmm. I've got two, two, two settings. I'm inherently a lazy individual, right? The moment mm-hmm. I, I'm not busy doing something, I just want mm-hmm. to lie down. So I never allow myself to lie down. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Just always have to be on the go, always thinking of things mm-hmm. that, you know, that we can be doing that's better. Yeah, and I guess that what you've done with with the service is you've recognized a need for some sort of a community center, basically, where where everyone can share their stories, have a great time together if they're off for lunch or, you know, just to see their clients or whatsoever. And you've kind of like acted towards that and and made it happen. Um, You know, a coffee shop, it doesn't I don't think it only attracts the the right people. It, It actually allows other shops to attract other shops you know you've the, you know it's i think what you've done I, i know you guys are competitive and you guys are kind of like aggressively growing which is absolutely fine for a business it's, if anything a successful business has to do that but i i also recognize in the story that you say is that you also know that for you guys to succeed you have to create you have to make sure that the community can kind of like prosper as well There's no yeah. point in you guys so, having, no, yeah. No tailor is bigger than Savile Row, right? Mm-hmm. And before COVID, there were 14 empty shops on on Savile Row, and and yeah. now there aren't. Mm-hmm. But the problem the landlord had, and the problem that tailors had, no tailors could really afford to fill the empty units, and mm-hmm. and you were having elected choices like Tom Sweeney not wanting to be on Savile Row, yeah. uh, Chiffonelli not wanting to be on Savile Row. Well, they're mm-hmm. they're two of the best tailors in the world, right? And yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if they're making a the decision not to be on Savile Row, there is almost mm. therefore an inherent problem about Savile Row. Yes. Those the other empty shops, a lot of them have um that you know they, they won't actively rent them out on the the other the, what's called the bad side of the street, let's call it. Mm-hmm. Um they won't rent those out to uh tailors. They mm-hmm. want to rent them out to um you know to other retail right. um rather, rather than craft based retail. But the problem is they'll always be empty until there is footfall on the street because why would you take a shop on Savile Row when you could take one on German Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Footfall is five times the amount. So the landlord mm-hmm. also has that inherent problem that mm-hmm. to attract new interesting companies in. The rest of Savile Row is saying, well, we need another shoe company. We need a watch company. But like, if you just think of the process of logic, mm-hmm. why, would you put, why would you put a non-tailoring shop on Savile Row if there isn't footfall? If anything, that's bastardizing Savile Row. Yeah. Hmm. Well, empty shops are ruining Savile Row, or were ruining Savile Row. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I still think, you know, the, the best street shops and the best streets are in London that are, are the ones of, you know, slight mixed retail. You know, Savile Row mm-hmm. can be protected, but have a great restaurant like Scott's is on Mount Street. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's you know that's what the street needs to attract sort of people. A, a reason to come here other than a point, an appointment to see your tailor, just to browse, just to walk down and say, oh, you know, yeah. I'm just going to quickly move into the Anderson and Shepherd haberdashery and see. Mm-hmm. You know what what they've got going on today, or nip into Drake's, and and and, and then they go. Oh, you know, what? I'm going to get a bespoke one made. I'm nipping and see what Richard Anderson is doing, and 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 that's the the way the sort of the, this this community has to work. You know, right? We we are a street in essence of competitors, but there is mm-hmm. an element of that we have to work together to survive. Yeah. And, and 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 I guess on the one hand you can say, well, if there's a coffee shop on the street, it's taking up the space of a tailor. But mm-hmm. I can assure that it's not because the rent on that place is monstrously big. Uh, mm-hmm. The premises is monstrously big. Um, that I, I'm not sure that there's a tailor out there that would would, would be able to fill it. Mm. Well, is the coffee shop there to stay? You would say? No, the, I've I've agreed with the landlord um, a year's extension. Um, mm. uh, fundamentally, I don't want to be a coffee shop owner. Really, right? <laughs> this is not my. Uh, I'm not. This is, I'm not trying to make the service Starbucks. I'm just mm. trying to make it fulfill a function. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've agreed to do it for one more year, but I also have an agreement with the landlord that if they rent it out to someone else, mm-hmm. I'm happy to move on at any point. Right, right, Because right. Because right. as I say, my thing is, I, I, I really, and, and it's, it sounds like a, a, a lie, but it's not, that the street has to survive. The street has to thrive. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, the street is bigger mm-hmm. than us. And mm-hmm. I prefer to see more people on the street, happier people on the street, doing lots of different cool things. Mm-hmm. than uh, a street of, of sort of tumbleweed. Yeah, and that's yeah. where the street was. Right? That's really where the street was. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully agree, man. 